This video could be a bit contentious because this is my personal thoughts on Brexit and there's a couple of notes here, not really, I've got a script, I'm just saying what comes to my mind as, goes, as I sit here thinking about it. Now, I am for Britain staying in the common market in Europe for obvious reasons because I live in Europe and for me it would be a bit more difficult if Britain left to travel there and ease of travel. That's just a personal thing but generally let me just start by making a few observations. I was back in England last week and the funny thing is when you leave Europe and you land on the plane in Britain there's a, a theme, a, a meme theme and the, the feeling of the place is like it's like a penitentiary mentality it's an island that's almost like a prison island and everyone in there are treated like inmates in a way of a very very lax security prison but still these these um, there's a feeling of it's like a Victorian prison maybe it's just all the people walking around with the high vis vests on jobs worths people telling you what to do all the time that's the thing in Britain it's a strongly governed country and a strongly governed country and as George Orwell said with lots of cheap luxuries that mitigate the surface of life so I've just flown in from Europe and I rented a car at Manchester Airport and the whole place where the car rental place is has got a, a 15 foot fence with razor wire on top to stop all the scum climbing in and stealing the cars scum climbing in that's the uh, term in Britain for people without money and there's a lot of them so you get in this rented car and you drive out of the high security place where the cars are kept and you get onto the roads and for someone who's been living in Europe for a, a while just you get such a shock of the state of the roads they're just full of potholes I went to Czechoslovakia 25 years ago just as they came out of the communist time and the roads there were really bad they were just not maintained at all and that's the exact thought I had when I got in the car in England last week that these roads are just like the roads in Czechoslovakia and it make, makes me ask myself why why is it so down run why is it so unmaintained the country? Why is there no money going into things like roads and infrastructure? Because it's just really unbelievable compared with mainland Europe. I'm not just talking about Germany. I'm talking using roads as a comparison. In France, in Holland, in Belgium, everywhere in Europe the roads are decent. You notice that if you leave England and go on holiday in Europe, you go from this bumpy, crazy ride to absolute smoothness. And it's true. And I often think that the British people are being sold a bill of goods. They're being ripped off totally. 
on their little island and they don't realise it. Now I, I agree with the NHS, that's a good thing, but it's so underfunded. I'll give you another example. Earlier this year, my wife, she uh, fell at a party and banged her head on the floor and split her head open. And we took her to the hospital, nine o'clock in the evening it was. And we took her to the hospital and she got her head stitched up and she was back at the party at half past ten. She went in, waited five minutes, got stitched up, out again. Now I was talking to a friend in England and the same thing happened to him about the same time, nine o'clock on a Sunday evening. And he was going along one of those paths where they have a special metal thing to stop scum on motorbikes going on public footpaths and they have like a metal archway across and he was walking under that and he's partially blind this guy and he caught his head under this metal stanchion thing and split all his head open and he went down to casualty at the hospital nine o'clock in the evening and he sat there till eight o'clock in the morning with a big bunch of tissues on his head blood all over his face and he didn't get seen to till eight o'clock the next morning so he sat there in casualty for 11 hours in the waiting room and got his head stitched up the next morning and that was just like another example of the difference between well i'm talking about germany now but i think the healthcare is pretty good in spain i think it's pretty good in in France and it's pretty good in Germany and dental care too there's a depending where you go in England if you go to a nice place I was in the Yorkshire Dales beautiful beautiful if you've got plenty of money but the cities apart from the nice areas of the cities but the majority of the areas in the cities is it's so run down and it's so depressing, it's so broken when you look at it compared to looking at a European town. There's just a, a sense of hopelessness there. And it makes me wonder where is all the money going because people are taxed more in Britain on cars, on road tax, on petrol, everything's higher tax and there just doesn't seem to be anything for it, for this money. And it could, it could be said that Britain's gone the American way um, with litigation, for example, if, if the council don't fix the roads and there's a big pothole and somebody trips up in the pothole and hurts their, their leg or the car drives through the pothole, um, people sue the, the council and the council pay out so all the money's going into lawyers' pockets rather than going into fixing the problems. And I think that's one of the problems about Britain. It's gone the American way, it's all down with lit litigation. People are scared to do everything because of litigation. And then they talk about Europe um, imposing rules on a uh, on Britain and that's one of the reasons they want to leave for the imposed rules from from Europe and it just doesn't seem to hang together people say they want a an elected government who's responsible to the electorate not some distant superpower super state that will do things not in their name. But I ask myself, in such a strongly governed country of Britain, which is governed by hereditary plutocrats, people who came in from France a thousand years ago, that's mainly the same people who are still ruling Britain. It's all the aristocrats. They're all, mil not all, but 
most of the people in the government are millionaires and they've got a vested interest in themselves and keeping themselves rich and there's always the feeling in Britain that uh, the government's not working for you the government's working against you it's rich people in the government trying to keep that money and everyone else it's yeah, I'm alright Jack that's a th that is the uh, modus operandi in Britain and people who think it's going to be better if Britain leaves Europe I think they're living in a delusory world really if you look at houses in Britain the prices of houses is insane insane quarter of a million pounds for a little house look at houses in Germany or France or Belgium anywhere in Europe the build quality is much much better they're, they're much bigger houses in Britain are, they're not slums but they're like little rabbit hutches the most of them with absolutely scandalously bad build quality but people have been programmed to believe that what they've got the Englishman's castle is his home the Englishman's dog kennel is his home and I've got nothing against the British people you know I love I think I'm, the, the people is a saving thing about England and the beautiful countryside until it gets destroyed by fracking or some other idiot thing so all the guys who tell you all the politicians who tell you to to leave Europe they've got vested interest in keeping the power in their hands let's digress a little bit now over the years countries get built up it starts off as villages it's one village against another village villages pulled together to be cities regions where cities are become counties and there's counties that this county that county counties come together to become a country and then one country and there's another country and it seems like it's a kind of a progress that we're going from a tribal village up expanding out till we get countries and my belief is world state would be good because if there was world state no countries just one world state then that would solve a lot of problems in my mind and what does sovereignty mean being having fealty to one sort of group of aristocrats your feudal lords having fealty to them is, is that any way to be proud and lots of people have spoke about world state H.G. Wells that was his big, big thing that eventually we all get we get this world state but the people against it always say yeah then it'll turn into a big totalitarian world with a few crazy people ruling us but I don't think it will be like that I think that's what, what's going to happen eventually that's the only way we're going to move forward is a world state and some form of machine um, organization computer organization giving every single person what they need to live I think that will come eventually it'll take a few hundred years but if we get through this period of what, what's going to happen I think is all the countries will merge together the perhaps Europe and America and perhaps Russia they will merge together and then perhaps China and Asia will merge together and there will possibly be a giant war but that's just that process I was talking about about small villages, counties, cities, countries it's 
that on a world scale growing up but eventually it will be one world state and we'll look back on, on times of today like we look back on medieval villages and every single village having a castle uh, to protect itself from being uh, attacked by the next village so that's how I think it's going to go eventually I know that's looking a long way into the future and generalizing but this thing about England going on its own becoming its closing the borders and becoming the little republic the little monarchy the little the little village with its castle again that's a step backwards and a step forwards for the feudalism that's coming about in England now you see it in England it's less the money's being concentrated into fewer hands um, you know people are are just not living a good life I don't think unless you are a part of that uh, minority with lots of money so you know I think about it if you're gonna vote about leaving or staying I, don't, I can't see any advantages of of Britain leaving the e EU all they will become more politically inbred and the ruling classes in Britain have never ever cared about cared about the quality of life of, of the working class and when they get a mandate to be even more stronger then Britain will become even strongly more strongly governed and I don't think it would be a nice place <laughs>